Hi, and welcome to Something to Talk About. I'm Linda McNamee, and as you saw from our introduction, today we are going to learn about cybersecurity and how to keep yourself hopefully one step ahead of the game. Um, but before I begin, I would like to invite you, if you have a call for our wonderful guest, whom you will meet momentarily, you can give us a call this evening at 781-270-9199. I think I got that right. Yes, I did. Or you can always email me at talk at vcattv.org. I would like to thank the crew for this evening. Chris Flaherty, one of the staff members here, is always making sure that us volunteers don't totally destroy the place, just partially. Kidding, Chris. Uh, we also have Liz Gillespie and Dominic Squilini who have given up their Wednesday evening to come hang out at BCAT. So I give them cookies, but I also want to give them my eternal thanks. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And now, oh, one last thing. I want to thank my husband, Paul, for staying home for daddy date night. Hope math homework went as smoothly as one would hope. There. Now, I am done all the administrative stuff. I would like to introduce... My guest, Lieutenant Glenn Mills from the Burlington Police Department, who's full body armor right now. I can't imagine how you're comfortable. <laughs> but um, thank you for joining me. And I know you came on the show, I think it was about three years ago now. Wow. <laughs> I know, time flies. Yeah. But now that my kids are that much older and they're getting more involved in online stuff and technology is changing so fast... I'm starting to mildly freak out, so. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, thank you for coming. Um, as we always begin, could you tell us a little bit about yourselves, about yourself, your only one, um, how you came to the Burlington area, what made you get involved in law enforcement, specifically cybersecurity? Well, I actually grew up in Burlington. <laughs> cool. My father was a police officer here. Okay. Um, so kind of family tradition thing there? Or? Yeah, he had tried to talk me out of it my whole life. Um, he said it's just Didn't not. Work. Yeah. I always secretly knew what I was going to do um, from a very young age. Uh, I always wanted to go out and help people. Okay. And um, I knew that police work was a lot more than what people might think from watching TV shows. Mm -hmm. <gasps> it's not true. None of it, no. Law and order is not true. Oh. <laughs> A lot of it's based on, uh, they'll have based <laughs> yeah, on reality, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, they don't show you the part where you're in a report room writing reports all the time. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't make stuff. good ratings. Yeah, so I grew up in Burlington, um, lived here my whole life. I, I lived in Boston briefly, moved back out. Um, I started working for the town of Burlington when I was about 14. I worked really? a summer job in the school department oh, as a school okay. custodian. So like, I don't think the police department would have hired you at 14. Not then, but that would have been nice. <laughs> that would have been um, Worked for the schools for several years, got on the police department part-time in 1992, and then full-time in 1996. Oh, and, um, okay. Now, were you going to school at the time, or? Uh, sure, school bits and pieces. I, I get involved at some point. Yeah, I didn't go to college right out of high school, um, and I wound up taking classes and chipping away at my degree and finally oh. getting a okay uh, my degree years ago, and then. Um, more recently, trying to chip away again at a, another master's degree. I have a master's certificate in public administration. And okay. Now I'd like to finish my master's degree in criminal justice. Wow. Okay. So, I cool. that with school. Yeah. But done a lot of training along the way. Okay. A lot of different programs that we've been to. And we're really uh, fortunate here in Burlington that we're allowed to go to a lot of training. Sweet. Well, in something like cybersecurity, you would think that. I don't know, there's a lot out there, and technology is changing. Like, it used to, I remember a quote a long time ago that technology doubles every two years now. Yeah, Moore's Law. Okay. Moore's Law talks about computer powering. Okay. Uh, computer power doubling. Okay. Um, every few years. It used years. to be like seven years, and then it was up to two years, but that was still like 20 years ago, so now it could be right. like every 10 minutes or something. And then the amount of information in the world. Uh, keeps expanding now mm -hmm. exponentially. So if you think of the amount of what would have been in the Library of Congress, okay. we've surpassed that many times over, and information is ever expanding as well. So, Speaking of Library of Congress, though, and total tangent, but how do you 
with technology changing, it used to be everything was on books and then microfiche and then floppy disks mm -hmm. and then digital. How, how do you hold on to this history? What is a good... Oh, that's a great question. So Storage. Yeah, some or, of that you media. Know, you you want to be able to read it in 10 years. Yeah. And we've, we've run into that problem with the police department. We've had older technologies. Every once in a while, you try to dig something up from the past. <laughs> it's and you don't three, have... It's not a five-inch floppy disk. Three and a half inch floppy disk. Uh, microfiche. Yeah. You don't have a microfiche reader. So Where do you find one, too? You know. Yeah. I mean, we have in our attic, we've got a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff, but... That is a problem, and uh, that's why you'll see companies for many years, up until more recently, they were even keeping everything on paper, that's because right. that's one medium that you can keep for a very long time, you know, literally for a uh, hundred years without it deteriorating. Mm. We don't know what the shelf life is of some of the digital media that's out there, so we'll see uh, yeah. pretty shortly, probably that. Oh, we can't read old um, DVDs and CDs, maybe. We don't know uh, at what point is that going to happen, yeah. uh, but I'm told that that's coming. Coming soon. soon. Yeah. So how would you define cyber security? So when you think of cyber security, it's a number of different things. It yeah. could be uh, when you think of the workplace, uh, okay. corporations. Right. They invest a lot of money in cyber security because they have to protect their data. Uh, right. Cyber security for an individual uh, that would be how do you handle your own data information, your data, your devices. Well, now with like online banking and all that yeah. kind of stuff. And yep. So there, there's there's a lot out there. But basically, you want to have probably, I would say, like good cyber hygiene where you have habits. Okay. You know, just like washing your hands. Um, there are things that you can do in your life to make you less susceptible Okay. Uh, to being a victim of cybercrime. But I hate to say this, but it's almost inevitable at this point that your information mm -hmm. um, has probably been taken somewhere at some point, and somebody has it. Great. And there have been so many hacks now with Experian, the credit reporting company, oh, credit really? card companies. Okay. Stores Target was another big one. Yahoo, if you had a Yahoo account of any type. Okay. So we've had many of these over the years. Yeah, I think a long time breaches. I set up a Yahoo account and never used it. Yeah. But somewhere out there, Somebody's that account and the email okay. address that you had and the password that you used okay. are out there in the world. And a lot of people have poor cyber hygiene mm -hmm. where they use the same password. Hi, I'm Linda. Every I have <laughs> don't want to say that on TV, but <laughs> there are a lot of people that yeah. can't remember a lot of passwords. So they will use the same passwords over and over. Okay. And like, oh, my dog's name and you know things like that. Well, mm -hmm. if you do that again and again and again, when one of your accounts is hacked in a data breach like that, even okay. though you've done everything okay, okay, um, that information's out there, and other actors out there may be exploiting that. Okay. So if they can figure out your name, they so look. So how do they? Up. How do they get that information? So these are dumped in major releases. Sometimes okay. these hackers will uh, find this information, and they'll put it up on a site. Okay. That is just for anyone who wants to post a massive amount Great. of data. Okay. And you can look on those sites and you can find, oh, here are usernames, here are passwords, social security numbers. Uh, oh. All this data is out there if okay. you know where to look for it. And once they have that and they focus in on, you know, a few people, mm -hmm. and they could do this several hundred people at a time and try to find names and then use permutations of your name and email address to guess. Maybe you've got a Gmail address now. So you had a Yahoo account, now you've got a Gmail account. Right. But because you have poor cyber hygiene, you use the same password, and now they can get into your new email account. Okay. And it's basically that principle. Now, when setting up an email account, is it any safer to use something cryptic or, like, first initial last name? I don't think that's the issue. I think the it's issue would the be password. the password. Okay. Yeah. Never, ever use the same password on multiple sites. Okay. And what I do, what I recommend is get a password manager because now okay. you sign up for your banking site and they say, well, we need a password that's capital three capital letters, four small letters, two numbers, three symbols, and you start forgetting your own passwords. You can't yeah. keep track of or them Or sometimes all. they assign you one that's totally random numbers. Right, right. Letter so number combinations. 
what you could do, you could write them all down somewhere, but is that really safe? If somebody finds that, now they have all of your exactly. information. Could you save it? I know somebody who saved it all in a Word document. But now if you put that on your computer and someone hacks that computer, everything that you had is now open. Okay. So uh, a good practice would be use to use a, um, a password manager. Okay. So I can't endorse any particular product, you know, being on the police okay. department. But I would say, you know, are some of them out there, out there. There are free ones out oh, there. Okay. And there are also freemium type products where you'll get a free version. Mm -hmm. But if you pay money, you get a better version of it. <laughs> so the free version will keep okay. all your passwords safe. Okay. Uh, the premium version might autofill your password when you go to certain websites. Oh. Okay. Which is handy. And then on your mobile device, it'll work. And okay. it'll work on multiple devices. So can't somebody hack that? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so what's the point? The point, well, those password management programs are specifically designed not to be hacked. So what they do is they take your information and then okay. they encrypt it. And they'll use okay. a high level of encryption Okay. so that if anyone does hack their site, it's very difficult to figure out what it is because okay. they're just getting a, a whole bunch of gibberish right okay your password is the decryption key where you put your password in and it then decrypts all those things oh, for you to use okay. so as long as you're using a really complicated password and nobody ever gets into your for account that password manager that password manager you have one password that sort of rules them all right Ooh, so it's a very I handy like <laughs> handy tool yeah so I'll use myself I use LastPass is a good one but there, there okay. are a lot out there there are plenty of them out okay. there and Just then like Google search. Yeah. Or, okay. And, and you get what you pay for sometimes, too. So if you use a free password that. manager, yeah. you might want to find out where are they from, Yeah. what country are they based in, is it a legitimate company. Yeah. Because if I'm a hacker, maybe I set up a password <laughs> manager. That's true. And I, I go, yeah. oh, hey, it's free. And so if I sign. call you and say, hey, what's a good one, then <laughs> you can do all that screening for me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That's true. But understand. But yeah. generally, you can find a lot of uh, okay. tech magazines out there. Okay. And you can read up. Do a little bit of research. Don't just pick the one that you know seems easiest because you really need to know what you're yeah, getting into. icon looks pretty. I think I'll take that one. <laughs> yeah, and people do that. People do that. That was a joke. I, I know. Yeah, okay. But I'm saying... Okay. I'm not joking. People literally do that. They'll wow. pick something based on, oh, it sounds cool, it looks cool, but you have to do some research. Okay. Is this a legitimate company? Is this a real? But you should do that for like everything though. Yes. Now. But we should. But look at the average user with their cell yeah. phone. Yeah. And look at how many apps are on their phone, yeah. and say, well, what do you know about this app? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> you know, what country are they in? Yeah. Oh. Not here. Okay. Interesting. How do you find right? out stuff like that? Just you can do a little bit of research, okay. just a minimal amount of research. Okay. Like you know Microsoft right. and Amazon and the big companies, right? And as you start drilling down, though, if you get some company you've never heard of, it's like okay. Chuck's Internet Company, <laughs> right? A little red I flag there. I don't know that I would download an app from them. Right. Because. But aren't people like. Aren't hackers mimicking like Microsoft, yes. like Amazon? I mean, h how do you know that which one's the real? You know, well, the real Amazon.com, please stand up. Right. So they're doing different techniques, um, maybe like URL hijack. So the URLs that universal yeah. resource like www.bpd.org. Right? Okay. That URL, your your address on the, the address. internet. So they can they can do something close to that. Okay. So let's say Walmart.com, they buy the domain name WalmartSales.com. Oh, okay. Now, Walmart will probably not let you do that. They probably bought many domains, but okay. they'll, it'll be like Walmart437.com, something like that that looks really close. Okay. And and this time of year is the perfect time yeah, to I watch for this. I think somebody said like Disney World, it was Disney World and Disney World period or something. Yeah. So you almost like didn't recognize that it was... It's going to look just like okay. that website, and it's very easy to do. It's very easy to set up. Okay. Uh, a URL, uh, an address, you can get them for anywhere from $3 if they're on sale up to 10 or $12. Right. And, you know, there are more expensive ones, but to get something that looks close enough, 
um, that people will be fooled by it is mm -hmm. not very hard. And then to mimic a, another website, again, is not very hard. Right. So uh, they'll also look for common misspellings. So if you think you're going to hit walmart.com and you s you type into the the search bar uh, w a m l r wa wamal mart Whale right wamal mart yeah and next thing you know it looks like walmart site and it has their logo and it has all their stuff oh, okay but you're ordering things online but it's a fake website okay so that's going on right now that as we speak uh, there are thousands upon thousands wow. of those websites out there uh, right now so if you're okay. shopping online Okay. You get a, an email saying, oh, look, a great sale on a 60-inch TV. Yeah. Oh, who doesn't want a 60-inch TV, right? Seriously. This is the time of year. Yeah. You click the link, and you're, oh, looks like Walmart. Click buy, put in your credit card number, and, and they've gotten you. Yeah. And um, you just have to look. So that's another great thing about password managers. Okay. If you use a password manager, yeah. you go on the website, and you go, wait a minute, why am I not – Getting my username and password automatically. Oh, so that's Because the password manager is checking that URL and saying, wait, wait that's yeah. not the right site. Hold on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there are different extensions. You can use browser extensions to enhance your security. Okay. Uh, but just always just take a, a quick look. Make sure that URL isn't something strange. And if you're yeah. suspicious... Go back to that home page. Go, wait a minute. Let me let me check this. Walmart.com. Yeah. Okay, now I'm here. Open up another window. Let me see and, if yeah. I can get back to that television uh, on sale. Okay. And then you might realize, wait a second, these don't match. Hmm. And it was now, where was match. it? I know it was in here somewhere. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it's related to cybersecurity, but as we're talking about online shopping and everything, especially right around this time of year, a lot of companies are now like taking a picture of your house with the package in front of it. Yes. Does that create yet another level of security risk? Because now somebody knows where you live and that you have a package in front of your house. I, or I don't think so. I think okay. um, because – It just feels like somebody's watching you when you're at work and you get a picture. Your package has been delivered. Yeah. Here's a picture of your house. Yeah. So – Right now, if I were to really become interested in learning everything about you, okay, or anyone, okay, um, depending on how big their profile is online, mm -hmm. I can gather a lot of information. Okay, I can very easily, right now, anybody in Burlington, I can pull up pictures of their house, mm -hmm. aerial photos of their house, the real estate information, the public records. Um, start searching the neighborhood around. Okay, find names do research on each and every one of those people. And if I have some basic knowledge, I don't need a lot, mm -hmm. and just uh, time, and um, I'm very persistent, and sometimes I get a little creative in how I search, <laughs> Okay, I can find out far more than somebody's going to have a picture of a package Anybody on your know. front okay. steps. Yeah. So that, that picture of the package on your front steps, that's good, but... It's not foolproof either. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are some um, unscrupulous drivers out there that will take the picture of the package and, and say, then hey, take I got the picture. and then take the package. <sighs> or call their friend and say, hey, there's another one back here. You know. So we're seeing a lot of people are stealing packages off of porches Wow. Uh, with pretty regular frequency right now. Now, along those lines, now they have video doorbells. Yes. How is, is, is that counteracting... I think so. I think these are really great devices. Okay. Uh, recently, people have been concerned about privacy issues. Okay. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I don't care if anyone is, if they hack my video doorbell and they're watching <laughs> in front of my house, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah. It's not yeah. in my house. It's, <laughs> and, you know, I guess they could figure out when I'm mowing leaving for work, <laughs> mowing my lawn, coming home. I'm not that worried about that because okay. those devices – have really been very helpful to police in catching a lot of different criminals. So, um, now does it always record? Now this is the interesting okay. thing. When you talk to these high tech companies, yeah. they'll say, "Oh no, we're not doing that. We're not doing this. We're not." And then it seems like we always find out. Oh, actually, they were. They were. They were collecting information. They were collecting data. They were. So, okay. um, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. 
I'm just do thinking, know. like, if somebody did, you know, like the commercial where the guy rings the doorbell and says, hey, I'm about to vandalize your car. Yeah. And then you realize it and you want to give it to the, your local police department. Is there a video record of it? Yes. Um, depending on what device you have. Okay. What services you pay for. Okay. Some devices uh, you'll buy are cameras, and they're just going to give you a live video feed. Okay. And that's it. Some devices are cameras, and they're recording, but they're not okay. connected to anything online. And then some devices will do both, live video feed and recording. Oh. And then they can often record on some cloud-based platform. Okay. Say, like Amazon, for instance. Okay. So those video doorbells, one of the biggest manufacturers of those, can record uh, oh. video. All right. Now, if we learn of a crime mm -hmm. in a neighborhood, we'll say we'll say Burlington. We don't have a Main Street, but we'll say Main Street. Okay. 100 Main Street, uh, somebody broke into the house during the day. Okay. And we don't know who did it, but we know it was sometime between noontime and 1. Okay. Okay? We can contact uh, Ring. Okay. Uh, Amazon. And, and ask them, hey, can you please do a request to the neighborhood? They keep a database of all those devices and their okay. locations. Okay. They send a notice out to everyone who has that device. Okay. And actually, you don't even need a particular brand to sign up for this. Okay. And they'll say, listen, uh, the police doorbell. are looking for video from this time. Do you want to give it to them? Your options are yes, mm -hmm. here you go, or I want to edit it first. Well, that's for the guy who maybe, like, Ran out to pick up his newspaper and his underwear. Uh, he doesn't okay. want to be on video and yeah. having us laugh at him. So, Okay, so I edit it, and then I'll send them what's left. Okay. Or the answer is no, and they have okay. those three options. Um, so that's one okay. uh, tool that's out there. Traditionally, we would do a neighborhood canvas, but we've always done this Okay. ever since the beginning of yeah. policing. You knock on the neighbor's doors, and you say, hey, did you see anything? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, yes, I did. And then we'll look for cameras. Oh, look, they have a video camera. Now, in the old days, that wouldn't help you because the video was so fuzzy bad. and bad that, <laughs> like, oh, look, here's Bigfoot running by, yeah. right? <laughs> you didn't know what you were looking at. But now we have these high-resolution yeah, yeah. these high resolution cameras okay. that will get us really good pictures, perhaps okay. even vehicles, license plates, people's faces. If we can get a really good uh, image like that, mm -hmm. We can use it, and a lot of our cases now are being solved very easily yeah. because we have good video now. Cool. So I do like um, these devices. Okay. I think the more of them that are out there, uh, the better. I do understand the concerns of privacy and Big Brother and things yeah. like that. I'm not terribly worried about that myself. Okay. Like, I won't be a police officer forever. I'll be a regular civilian, and yeah. Event, yeah. I'll have to worry about these things, too. And I'm not terribly worried about anything that's out in the public. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not incredibly concerned over. Can you use these things to track people? Absolutely. And we're seeing, you know, abuses of this. Uh, we're seeing overseas, like in China in particular, okay. where they are tracking people. And they're using a lot of these good technologies okay. that can fight crime, but they're abusing them. Yeah. So I'm hoping we're in a country now we'll never reach that point. But overall, these devices have been really good for reducing crime. Okay. It makes it very difficult to break into people's houses if, <laughs> if you all the neighbors have there. cameras all over the place. <laughs> How can you do that? Yeah. So you have to move on to something else. And we're, right. we're actually seeing that too. A lot of the crime now, they can't do it in person. They're moving it online. Crime is down okay. right now to levels that we don't even, didn't even believe was possible. Okay. You're safer today probably than you've been almost in this entire country's history. Wow. We're at 1950, 1960s levels with crime right now. Now, if you watch the news, you won't believe that. Well, But I can yeah. tell everyone factually, I'm telling you, okay. you're very safe. Because nobody watched the news if it's boring. The news was boring. You know, oh, something good happened. Something good happened. Right. Yeah, so clear. we're generally, we're a lot safer now. And a lot of, there are a lot of factors behind it. Okay. Crime is like weather. There are so many factors that go <laughs> into it. It's not... Everyone okay. says, oh, it's one thing, it's this, it's okay. lack of respect, or it's um, education, or people aren't this opportunity. being good enough. Yeah. So what is it? We, we can't say one thing. There are right. several things that have happened over okay. the past several decades that have made crime continuously go down. 
Okay. And one of those things is the proliferation of uh, security technology. Okay. It's much more affordable now. So this now. is like a physical crime, like somebody breaking into your house. All this types of crimes. Okay. Violent crime, too. It's very okay. hard to go out and rob people and mug people and attack people if everywhere you go there are cameras. Yeah, okay. Right? Now, literally everywhere you go are cameras because everyone has one in their pocket now. Mm -hmm. And they can instantly take a picture of someone or a video and, yeah. and then send it you know, to the police, keep it and give it to the police. And um, people get caught. A, a lot, lot more faster. Easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But what about stuff like embezzlement or something? I mean, so I think that's where really, that's kind of w when we sneak into the whole cyber and right. So now crime is a lot harder to commit in the real world, but now in the cyber world, yeah, now it's like the wild west all over again. Exactly. Because we don't have a worldwide police force. Right. Dealing with just cybercrime. And it's very vast. It's vast. So we have local police departments. So okay. I'm a police officer inside of Burlington. Okay. At 11.8 square miles. And that's my and that's jurisdiction. That's actually kind of like the shape of Burlington, That too. is. That's what I tell people. Yeah. It's, it's shaped it's like a shaped diamond. Like that. Yeah. 11.8 square miles, somewhere in the area of 20, almost 26,000 people living here. Daytime population. I've heard crazy quotes. I believe probably all the way up to 70,000 people, which is like a city. Okay. Right, in the daytime, Monday through Friday, especially around Christmas time. So we have all these people here. That's but why I don't go to the mall. Yeah, but where <laughs> are you going to go commit crime? Well, you can go online. And the threshold to commit online crime has been reduced. Okay. So let's say 10 years ago. All right. To do cyber crime, you needed some more skills, a little more wherewithal, but... Right. The tools and the techniques become more and more available. Okay. So I compare it to think about computers. When okay. they started, they were the size of warehouses. Right. And they've shrunk and shrunk. Mm -hmm. And now we have these powerful computers in our pockets. Right. The software was super expensive. You want to buy a computer program? Yeah. Thousands and thousands of dollars. But that becomes cheaper and cheaper, even to the point where a lot of software is free. Right. So now you can get a very powerful computer. You can use free software. And there are a lot of things that you can do with it. And okay. now we have more access to people and information through social media okay. than we've ever had. And that's true of everyone, including mm -hmm. the bad guys. So there's a lot more opportunity out there. Right. There are a lot of uh, vulnerabilities out there. Okay. So we believe that cybercrime is probably like an iceberg where we're only seeing the tip of it. Right. And a lot of it's under the surface, unreported. Yeah. And especially at the local level, Quite frankly, I mean, people report things to us, and it's like, well, that that's overseas somewhere. Yeah. And if it's a small dollar amount, the federal agencies don't have the resources to take right. it on. I mean, we don't really have the resources to mm -hmm. take it on because we can't go flying over to yeah, Nigeria yeah. to yeah. arrest exactly. the, the prince who, who was going to send you all your money, right? <laughs> um, some of the scams right. that we've seen. So, yeah, it's, it's become really difficult, and it is. It's, it's really s similar back to the, uh, the Wild West days when you had yeah. vast open territory and very little law enforcement mm -hmm. able to, to take care of it. And it always seems like criminals are very creative, very resourceful, and they're coming up with stuff before anybody else is aware of it. So yeah. how... Do you, as a police officer, stay either, you know, at the same level or anticipate? How do you anticipate <coughs> possibilities? So keeping up with it is probably easier because you can actually follow a lot of the, um, there, there, there's a whole hacker community out there. Okay. And there are some, they call, you know, call themselves white hat hackers. So they're good guys. Okay. So they'll try to break into systems and do things uh, to help learn about the vulnerabilities, uh, okay. and they'll share those with people. Okay. So that's on the hacking side. Social engineering side as well. You have a lot of researchers out there who are figuring out vulnerabilities okay. uh, on different social media platforms, email platforms, w and whatever. So let's see if I could break into this. Yeah. And so if I weren't an honest person, then what could I do with it? Right, right. And then they start <laughs> thinking... You almost have to think like a bad guy. Mm -hmm. So keeping up with it, you learn a lot from uh, sharing information. So I'm part of a 
a regional information sharing okay. group, uh, the Mass Asso Massachusetts Association of Crime Analysts. Okay. Uh, one purpose of our organization is just to share information. Okay. And all of uh, the members, <laughs> everything. I'm sorry. So crime trends and whatever we're okay. saying. And then also we have an international association. Okay. <clears throat> so the Massachusetts Association, MACA, consists of about 174 uh, active members right now. Okay. We're part of the international, which is well Is over there a national first or nope. does it go straight? It goes right to international. Wow. Okay. And that's some 3,800 members or more right now. I wow. think they might even be up to 4,000 now. So we share information, we look at the trends, and then we discuss these things. Okay. And people will put out, hey, has anyone seen this? Okay. And people will recognize it in other parts of the United States, wow. Canada, Europe. Okay. Um, there are a number of newsletters out there for law enforcement that I subscribe to, and I try to follow all the trends there. Uh, technology newsletters, mm -hmm. we try to keep up with that. So I spend a lot of time in reading and research, trying to keep up with things. And I also use Twitter as a great resource because there's so much information. Um, I'm afraid of Twitter. I haven't gone on there yet. <laughs> Twitter's a great tool. If you want up-to-the-minute uh, up to the minute information, that's the place to go. Uh, okay. Um, and I use it for research and for news and, and other things. Okay. Uh, I follow um, intelligence, open source intelligence accounts and government accounts and researchers. Okay. And you can find out what are the trends. And then you can also sort of anticipate, if you have a certain way of thinking, mm -hmm. where people are surprised by certain types of crimes, yeah. and I'll always tell them, well, I'm not really surprised that happened, because you can see it coming. You look at what's happened in the past, okay. and you can almost extrapolate, look into the future and say, well, um, the automobile. When they invented the automobile, they weren't thinking people someday are going to use these to commit crimes. But why wouldn't they? Because when they had horse and buggy, they committed the same crimes with the horse and buggy. Yeah. Now they can do it with an automobile, okay. and they can do it faster and more efficiently. And then the next Great. transportation, mode mm -hmm. of transportation, whatever that might be, you have to start thinking, okay, we've had this with automobiles. What will that translate into in the future? Okay. So self-driving cars, right? That'll be the right. next okay. big thing probably. I don't know when, but sometime. They'll They're already here. around, I not, think. Not entirely where you can just go down to your dealership and right. you can just But they have cars that like can parallel park for you. They have I, cars. I think I need one of those. Yeah, yeah. They have cars that will pretty much do it, okay. but they're not 100% yet. Okay. And the biggest problem they're having is us, the people driving. We're too unpredictable and we create too many <laughs> problems for the perfect, perfectly driven automated cars have a problem with our unpredictability. So that's the threshold now they're oh, trying to get okay. past. That's the We obstacle. need to get IBM's Watson out there to figure it out. Exactly. So what kind of crimes are we going to see okay. with self-driving cars? Okay, maybe they will get hacked. And what happens? That would be scary. And what does it look like when somebody hacks your car? What can they do with that? Well, they could commit certain types of crimes. Mm -hmm. They could use it to... Uh, terrorists could use it. Yeah. Mass drive killers, it into buildings, driving into people, know. driving into buildings. Yeah. Uh, the person who's in the car, if you want to hurt them, mm -hmm. you can make the car do things to hurt the per people inside. You could uh, maybe use it for um, different crimes where if you were to get money from someone mm -hmm. and say, oh, mail it to me, yeah. send it to me, send it to me electronically, well, maybe one thing would be to have the, the hacked um, self-driving car pull up to your house, throw the money in the car. And the car drives away. You, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you start thinking, wow. how, how have we done things in the past? What's happened in the past? Okay. And look at the future and start kind of brainstorming on, well, what could happen here? Okay. And it's, you pretty much will come up with some likely scenarios. Okay. Right? Same thing with computers. As the computers get more and more powerful and the software gets better and okay. cheaper and even free, what are some of the things that you can do with that? Right. So one whole area you look at would be artificial intelligence okay how are the bad guys going to use that there's a million different ways yeah <laughs> where you start yeah well we could start with one thing i've been talking about lately at conferences is uh deep fakes yeah we were talking about that a little bit before i hadn't heard yeah. of that before you mentioned it so deep fake technology is using artificial intelligence okay they can get um, a person's image okay. a person's voice and using really advanced, powerful computers and algorithms, mm -hmm. they can create a very realistic likeness. Okay. Sort of like the movie um, Running Man, 
with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And do you remember the scene? They had to pay a lot of money to have a scene where uh, the good guy got killed, but it didn't really happen. Yeah, okay. There was a scene in the movie like that. Right. Well, that would be deep fake technology. Wow. So okay. they're able to simulate re- very realistic video mm-hmm. and create something that never happened. So if anyone watching, if you just Google deep fake, okay. you're going to get news stories and, and items and articles about okay. it. Okay. And you can actually go and see videos online of real deep fake technology being used. Okay. And some of them, um, there's one that was um, the actor uh, Jordan Peele, the comedian. Okay. And he's, it's his voice, but he's being synthesized, and his movement is being synthesized to a video of um, President Obama. And wow. it's President Obama talking, and you see him in the video, uh-huh. and it's not him. Okay. So now you, but it's what a, can you do? But it's a CGI version of him with the voice manipulated to sound like him. Exactly. So what could you do? But are their voices kind of close to begin with or can you like no. really Yeah, you would you would know right okay. away. It's like that's not him. Yeah. You know, a well-known person, it's very easy to figure out like that's not their voice. Yeah. Especially if you have someone who's been in the news for 8 years. Right. Uh, or more and you start saying, "Well, wait a second, something sounds off." Yeah. Well, the deep fake technology allows you to replicate anybody okay and if you think about the dangers of that uh, <laughs> i don't want to think about the dangers i think my <laughs> head would explode yeah so it, if you really think about it we're going to see probably the next election cycle we'll see a video come out and it will be maybe the president or whoever is running against him okay. and it will be something that seems outrageous on its face and it will spread like wildfire on social media mm-hmm. But it could be entirely fake. Okay. Brings up the whole fake news thing. Right. So we okay. look at, if you remember Ronald Reagan, years ago he was doing a microphone test and he had said, oh, we outlawed Russia and oh, we're going to commence bombing yeah. in a few minutes. Now, a lot of people aren't old enough to remember that, but I remember it. Yeah. Well, that was not broadcast live to the world. Right. But it was it was put out there. It was recorded, yeah. And you can still listen to it online today. And it was Ronald Reagan making a joke, doing a mic check. But yeah. now imagine if they had the president today. Yeah. In the White House on yeah. video, saying, "Hey, we're going live, and we've uh, commenced an attack on North Korea." And that spreads like wild on social media. Mm-hmm. And now you're an intelligence official in North Korea, in their okay. military, and you see this. And you're like, oh, crap. And you yeah. have a few minutes. Yeah. What are you going to do? Now, that's nation Shit states. counter, yeah. So now we're thinking that's big picture. Now, what happens is the technology shrinks okay. and becomes cheaper. Now I can do that. Okay. And the bad guy can do that. Okay. And what if the bad guy puts out a video of... Somebody here in Burlington, and it could be something embarrassing. Okay. And they're trying yeah. to extort money from them. Right. But that's not me. But it looks real. Yeah. S- you see where I'm getting? Where yeah. That technology, we're seeing it at this big level. Well, I'm also thinking, you know, we, we had down. talked about, you know, trying to get back at your ex before, but yeah. I'm thinking like custody battles. Yeah. You know, yeah. one parent against the other saying, oh, well, they're a bad parent because look at this video of them. Here's a video of them uh, beating our child. Yeah. Totally fake video. Right. But yes, that can happen. Wow. So that's when you start. That's how you think of the future. Okay. It's not but how right do you combat now, that? but we're really close. So how are we going to counter that? Well, how are we identify it other than, you know, he said, she said. Right. And so the technology... To combat deep fakes, okay. Now we're using artificial intelligence to create bad things or okay. good things too. Yeah, it can be used in movies like Forrest Gump, when he's talking to President mm-hmm. Kennedy and right. he's with all these famous people. Which was people. really good. Yeah, and that's the same technology. <laughs> yeah. right? Oh, okay. So with that technology, that was Hollywood technology. Mm-hmm. It was millions of dollars, but the cost goes down. It becomes right. easier to do, and now you can use and it in movies. And now you can do that on your phone. 
and, and, and soon, yeah. You'll be able to make some really good videos just right there. Wow. And you'll only need a quick, here's a picture of someone, and you'll have their face, and now wow. you can manipulate it so they're talking. Um, so how is that going to affect people yeah. going down the line? So I think the companies that use artificial intelligence now to detect deep mm -hmm. fakes, I think they're going to get very rich. I think so. I think it's a now matter of time. Now, are there companies that already can do this? Yeah, there are companies working on this. Okay. So um, I think it's just something to watch, and it's going to become a big problem, and it's this national, international problem now. Mm hmm but it will start to hit people at the local level. Yeah, okay. So we're seeing this sort of with, yeah. um, okay. you know, ugly um, divorces, you know, uh, ex-girlfriends, things mm -hmm. like that, where deepfake technology is often used to create pornographic videos of celebrities. Okay. Okay, well, what happens when they start using that on the average your person. neighbor? Yeah. Right? And that's when we're going to come in. And we're going to try to identify who created this, where did this come from, who's, yeah. who's disseminating it, and can we charge them criminally? Okay. Um, oh, I think that's... Sure yeah, make sure it's, you know, yeah. fake. Right, okay. right. So that's, that's the way the future is heading right now. And um, I think we're pretty aware of it, but mm -hmm. I don't know that all the 18,500 some odd police departments in the United States are really thinking yeah. about this as much as maybe they should because you have well there's also so many other things that you have to do and pay attention to. Yeah. now okay i kind of live in a cave where i don't watch a lot of news but i remember not too long ago there was a big debate and question about alexa being in your house and people listening in on your everyday conversations where has that gone has that gone away, or is it still happening? Or? No, I don't think that's ever going to go away. I think that everything connected to the or World Siri Wide Web, or, yeah. all of them, they're all connected to something online, uh, okay. and it's a constant battle between the hackers and the defenders. Mm -hmm. And really, if you think about it, attack is always one step ahead of defense. Exactly. Right? You're always going to find that weakness, and then they're going to have to plug it. Okay, yeah. Now, a lot of companies are using something called bug bounties. So if you want to make money, okay. if you can hack something that belongs to Google, okay. they'll pay you money. Oh. They'll say, hey, I hacked your system. Oh, great. Here's some money. Thank you for pointing that out to us. Yeah. So that's How'd that. you do it? Yeah. <laughs> and that's called a bug bounty program. Oh, okay. So these tech companies are, are figuring out that it's smarter to actually, rather than trying to hire your own little team of experts. Okay. To, to do like what's called it's like um, consulting yeah <laughs> but this way you're, you're, I'm you're a freelance hacker yeah. you're crowdsourcing where okay. you're opening it up to the crowds okay. and saying here inviting people try to find our vulnerabilities and if you do we'll pay you money okay that's a really good uh, approach to security because now you're finding more vulnerabilities because okay. people are glad to hack things all the time. They do it just <laughs> for the challenge. Okay. Right? So now they're like, hey, I can make money doing this. Like nice. That? Yeah. So these companies like Google, uh, Apple, mm -hmm. Microsoft, all of them, okay. they're all watching out for these things. And these devices are there, and these devices are in our pockets. All of these things contain microphones, and a lot of them have cameras and speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're connected to the internet, at some point there will be a vulnerability, okay. and it won't be plugged in time, and somebody will exploit that. Okay. So if you have um, any kind of device in your house that can listen or right. see you, it can listen and see you. And okay. at some point, you're going to have someone on the other end of that device that you don't want there. Okay. Uh, and the FBI even put out, I think it's the FBI, the uh, recent warning is in the news about the smart televisions. Okay. They said there are some vulnerabilities out there. So if you have a smart TV that has a camera on it, okay, they're basically saying like, hey, watch out, make sure you update the software. <laughs> because if you don't update the software in all these devices, okay. if you have an older version of software that has a vulnerability, vulnerability. you haven't fixed it. Even though the company fixed it, mm -hmm. if you don't take the time to make sure you have yeah. the latest updates. You have to put the Band-Aid on as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So 
you can't count on that being done automatically. You have to okay. check your own security every once in a while. Now, with something like, okay, I have a smartphone. It has a camera. It has a microphone. But if it's sitting in my pocket <clears throat> and I'm not using it, how can someone, like, activate it from the back end? So the primary vulnerability on your smartphone yeah. is probably going to come from those apps that we talked about earlier. Oh, okay. So Joe's tech company, yeah. download the app from that company okay. that you don't know. Okay. And now that app has permissions to activate your microphone and your camera okay. and to collect data. So it's like giving your phone a brain. It's giving your phone a back door oh, that somebody okay. else can use to get into it. Wow. So be careful about what apps you download because okay. those apps, oftentimes, you're giving them permissions to access everything in that device. Oh, okay. Photos, videos, and all the data. So it's not just these little silos sitting in your phone, it's... Your contacts. Yeah. And I don't know uh, Apple products as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been more of an Android user, but okay. I know that when I download an app, I go right away to the permissions that that app has, and I shut off everything that it doesn't need. Because oh, why okay. Why does this you need, don't need it. Yeah. access to my camera? Well, I don't. Off. Microphone doesn't need that off. Uh, contacts. Why does it need my contacts yeah. off? You can you can selectively go through. Mm. Um, assuming Apple has the same feature. Yeah. I've One thing I'll say about Apple, their uh, app store is more secure. Okay. They do a little more. No, uh, I have screening. heard that's always kind of always has been historically the case where Apple has been a lot safer than the PC world. Yeah. Is it because of volume or is it because yeah. they have? So when you talk about computers and PCs, yeah. now you're looking at uh, Microsoft Windows is running on something like 70% of all okay. the machines, and 30% might be running something else, including okay. Apple. Okay. So if you're a hacker, you're you going to go after the 70%. You want to you want to yeah. go for the bigger percentage, right? And I'm not saying those are the right. exact numbers, but they varied over time. But generally, the biggest fish is the the one they're going to go after, right? And they're going to spend less time after that particular brand right. that's a smaller brand. But for laptops or computers, desktop, laptop, computers, it seems like there is still that not equal distribution. But for phones, it seems like it's a lot more an even playing field. Yeah, I think Android still dominates uh, okay. worldwide. Apple still has a, but a, probably a larger market share than they would in the PC world. And now Google is getting into, um, like, one device that I have is a Chromebook. Okay. So that's sort of a replacement for a laptop. Okay. It's sort of like your smartphone, but like a laptop. Okay. More power, more mm -hmm. features, but not a lot. And very very cheap. Yeah. Um, you can get a decent one for $100, $200. And we'll do most of what most users will need. Okay. Like most people buy these really expensive laptops with all this power and stuff. and Just use a Word document. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're checking your email, going yeah. on Facebook, and using Word. Right. You don't need the latest, greatest, fastest uh, laptop. Right. It's overkill. But most people, probably 80, 90% of all people out there can get by with a Chromebook. Okay. Or, uh, you know, MacBooks and other mm -hmm. uh, PCs. They don't need the, the latest and greatest. But now the security, that's the other issue. The Chromebooks, yeah. it's built in because okay. that's part of the operating system. Okay. And it's mostly uh, an, an a, a device to access the Internet. All right. Whereas your PCs, your laptops have a lot of software that you install on them, which opens up okay. other vulnerabilities. Right. Because right. you don't know the origin of mm -hmm. all of these things that you're downloading. Yeah, exactly. But even like software now, you don't go out to you know Best Buy and get a disc. It's... Right. Go online and yep. you know. You so buy know who you're getting your software from. Okay. And there are other parts of the world where the government has a lot of influence within the corporate mm -hmm. sector in that country. Okay. And if they say, "Hey, you're going to give us a back door oh. into this device or into this software," they can't argue with them. They can't say yeah. no. Voluntary uh, cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to think about that okay. when you get when you get these things. Where is it coming from? Okay. 
you know, and, and some countries, they, they do actively use those tools uh, to gather information on us. Okay. I'm trying to think of something else. I mean, we have, like, totally not done any of these. Um, okay, before the show, we were talking about scammers. Yes. And it used to be, like, phone scams. Yep. Now it's going to email. Ooh, actually, yeah, okay, let's finish this, and then I remembered what I wanted to ask you. What are some of the things to look for knowing that it's fake when you're getting emails? Like if it says it's from your daughter or it's right. from somebody. So we're seeing, we're seeing all kinds of scams now okay. where the medium, uh, it doesn't really matter as much. It's, it's okay. whether it's a text message, a Facebook message, okay. an email, a phone call. They find a way to contact you. Okay. And the basic formula for a scam works like this. I'm going to present you with some information that's going to really induce a really strong emotional reaction in you. Mm -hmm. So I might say, I kidnapped one of your kids. Okay. Or one of your kids is in jail. Something really... Okay. Or has been in a bad accident. Right. It's one of those things that's going gonna, gonna to hit you really hard. Yeah. Or uh, with grandparents, they like to target the, – the bad guys target uh, seniors a lot, mm -hmm. but they're targeting everyone. Right. Seniors get a lot of attention, mm -hmm. but they are targeted frequently. But we're finding that people are being scammed at all age ranges. Okay. Like you can't assume that the 20-something-year-old is so tech-savvy that they're not going <laughs> to get scammed. They get scammed too. Yeah. So first, you get that they emotional – quieter about it. Yeah. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're a little embarrassed. So okay. they hit you with that emotional – information okay kind of throws you off balance you're not thinking as clearly as you might okay you might not recognize like wait a minute that doesn't make sense so they'll hit you with that information then they'll have some demand for money so it's a strong emotional reaction um we'll call like the grandparent scam that's okay. a really frequent one right now um grandma's at home phone rings hi it's your grandson johnny uh you know how i was on vacation in, in uh, Mexico right now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it fun? You have no, I just got uh, kidnapped. Or I just got arrested. Okay. Okay, I got arrested and I need money for bail. Oh, no! My little grandson, he's, he's in yeah. Mexico in jail. And I have to get him out. All right, listen. Uh, I need money for bail. The only way I can get it, you have to go down to CVS for me, buy these gift cards, <laughs> and then just scratch the numbers off and read me the numbers. And I can use that to pay my bail and get out of here. Okay. And grandma hops in the car and shoots right down to the mm -hmm. CVS or whatever store. Okay. And buys these cards because you're not thinking clearly. You're not thinking yeah. like, wait a second. Why can't I just give you a credit card number? Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> register because they're so panicked. Right. I have to act now. Right. They got hit with okay. that emotional issue. And then that demand for money, yeah. and they want to do the right thing, and they're so focused on that, they, they are running down to the store as fast as they can to get that money to get okay. their grandson out. So all the scams have that same formula. Yeah. Emotional punch, and yeah. then demand for money, and then some kind of unconventional method of payment. Yeah. Because they don't like to say, oh, give me your credit card number. They used to. Yeah. But what happened now, the credit card companies got a little bit better at detecting Fraud, like, Fraud. wait a second. Yeah. You'll even get a notice now, like on your phone. Uh, yeah. Probably a lot of people got me. It's like, did you just make a purchase? Yeah. You get a phone call. Hey, did you just buy some airline tickets? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay, cancel. Okay, yeah. So the scammers know this. So now they can't say, oh, send me a check. Okay. Because you'll just stop so payment. Traceable. Yeah, yeah, and you'll stop payment before they ever okay. get it. They want that money. Or they used to go to uh, Western Union. Western uh -huh. Union got really good about educating their consumers. So you would go to Western Union, you'd see these signs all around about scams. Yeah. And they'll even ask you, like, are you sure you want to send this money out of the country? Because, yeah. you know, there are these scams going on. Oh, I didn't know that. So they can't use that avenue okay. like they used to. So now where are they going to go? How can you move money around? Gift cards. Great way to move money. So 
you have these gift credit cards. Okay, yeah. The green Dot money cards and some okay. of these other brands. Yep. Or you also have, they're even using Apple cards, yeah. Google, you name it. There are gift cards out there, and they'll get that. Mm -hmm. You give them the information. That's the same as you giving them money. Right. But now it's harder to stop it. Okay. Because you just bought it at a store down the street. Right. They've immediately taken the money out yeah. of those accounts yeah, and used it. Yeah. Hundred dollar Amazon card. Well, boom, it's you gone. You can't and you can't stop it in time. So that's the trend now. Okay. So it's that emotional issue, demand for money, and then finally the other piece is that unconventional payment method. So what would someone what should someone do if they receive one of these? Do they just ignore it? Do they report it as spam? Do they call mm -hmm. you? I mean, what do they do? Yeah, so we don't mind um, if you think it might be a scam, give us a call. Okay. We're there 24-7. We're, we're <laughs> literally at the phone for close. you. We never close. <laughs> even on Christmas, even on okay. New Year's, it doesn't matter. We're there. So we've had people call up and say, hey, I got this call, and I, they said they kidnapped somebody in my family. I don't know. That's a scam, and we get that all the time. We'll just tell them on the phone. Yeah. That's a scam. They're probably overseas, very hard for us to even do anything about it. They probably spoof the phone number, okay. yeah. which means they're showing you a phone number on your caller ID that's not their real number. Yeah. It's very, very, it would take literally thousands of hours, and you may never find them. So mm -hmm. the risk and reward is, is pretty good for them. Yeah. So we don't mind people calling to ask. Or if you think it's a scam right away, it probably is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, double check it. There's not a whole lot we can do unless you find some indication that they are in this country. And then we'd have a much better chance of tracking them down. Oh, okay. uh, some of these virtual scams will include like a kidnapping. Okay. And we've had them happen here where they'll say, hey, uh, we kidnapped your son or your daughter. Or we had one where they said they had kidnapped the son and they told the son that they had kidnapped the mother. They had them oh. both at the same time. Wow. And they were pretty clever about it. They actually let them hear each other's voices at certain points to make oh, wow. them believe. Oh, okay. But what I can tell you is the chances of somebody being kidnapped for ransom, uh -huh. like I don't care how many movies and <laughs> TV shows you've watched, <laughs> Okay. doesn't yeah. happen very often. doesn't happen very often. Because it's such, it's such a stupid crime to do. It's really like if you want to be caught, like kidnap <laughs> yeah, someone, yeah. right? That Because you're going to have the police after you. You're going to have the FBI after you. You're yeah. going to have everyone after you. The risk is so high. Yeah. And then how are you going to get payment without getting caught? Right. It's just such a stupid thing to do. But people, because they watch movies and TV, they think, oh, my son was kidnapped. Are you a multimillionaire? No. <laughs> no. I'm a janitor. Well, <laughs> they're probably not. You know what yeah. I mean? Like we're not kidnapping yeah. people off the street and holding yeah. them for ransom here a lot. Now, there are some countries, yeah, they do have a high uh, rate of kidnapping. If you have okay. any kind of wealth in some places, they will kidnap wow. your children and hold them for ransom. Okay. But here in the U.S., incredibly rare, okay. incredibly rare. So if you get that call that someone's been kidnapped in your family, right away I would say, wait a second. Yeah, no. Probably not. But you know what? We're out of time. So thank you so much. We totally like went off on several tangents, but yeah. it was very informative, kind of afraid to like go back online but i will try just be careful okay thank you very much and i also want to thank everyone for tuning in at home hopefully you found our conversation this evening as informative as i think so and have a wonderful week have a wonderful holiday season and i'll see you around town good night